Hey, everybody. Good morning. It's Friday. You know what that means? This is 7 Minutes in the Morning, where five days a week, you get tips and hacks dedicated to helping business owners and leaders just like you find and break through the one thing that is preventing your success. And now, here's the host of 7 Minutes in the Morning and your results coach, Tom Rigsby. Mm. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sorry I was a little bit late getting started this morning. Had to get a refill on the uh, the old soup bowl of coffee there. Already killed one whole pot this morning. This should be a great day. <laughs> hey, listen, when you get here, whether you're watching live or on the replay, thank you very much for doing that. Do what Joe and Catherine have done. Say good morning. Leave a comment. Throw the old thumbs up, hearts, likes, whatever is appropriate in the venue where you're watching. I'll always appreciate that. And uh, yeah, let's see what else. It's Friday. That means it's uh, free coaching Friday today. And your turn to try and stump the coach. So I'm going to go ahead and let you... Think about that for just a minute. Try to come up with a topic. Good morning, Abby. Well, good to see you here. Um, give you a topic. Give you a, a minute to think about that. I'm going to seed our thought here for just a minute uh, while you're working on that. But if you have a question, topic, comment, whatever, uh, conundrum you want me to address, put that down in the comments, and we'll get to it. But to kind of help uh, seed our thought a little bit, <clears throat> I want to talk about difficult uh, conversations, difficult conversations. It is, you know, I say very often that there's no good training program for being a business owner. We, we, you know, all of school, all of education is about um, how to be a good employee. And there are a couple of little bits and pieces that are really good if you want to run a business, but really, being a business owner, being an entrepreneur, they don't teach that stuff. And one of the things, so consequently, one of the things is we don't get a good, we don't get good examples of how to have difficult conversations. Now, you know, if you're fortunate enough to work around someone who's gifted at this, or, or maybe, you know, maybe this is the kind of stuff that, um, that you take up in, inside the family. You learned it from the family. Oh, awesome. That's great for you. For the rest of us, we had to learn it on our own. And so if I have one tip about how to have difficult conversation, actually, I want to give you two. The first one I learned in the Army. Uh, when you're outside the U.S., when, you, when you're with working for the government, actually, anywhere outside the, the United States, you get access to AFN, Armed, the Armed Forces Network. It, it's Americanized TV for you wherever you are. It's local. And, and one of the great things about AFN are the commercials, um, commercials in the news. But um, so they would run this commercial. And the whole point of the commercial was to share this one point. Bad news doesn't get better with time. Bad news doesn't get better with time. So if you have a difficult conversation that you need to have, there's probably some bad news or the prospect of bad news associated with it. It doesn't get better with time, right? So address it head on and just move forward, right? I mean, it, it it's not going to get better the longer you wait. The second thing that I would say about having difficult conversations is sound a little woo woo for you, but stick with me here. Speak the truth in love. And that was something that, that we were really um, keen and, and diligent. I hope about teaching our kids about how to, how to work things out with other people. There is nothing, absolutely nothing in the world wrong with saying this is the result I would like to get out of this relationship, out of this exchange, out of this transaction. Stating your your intentions and desired outcomes, nothing wrong with that. And and the other person, the other half of this, whether they are uh, an employee, a customer, a partner, whatever the case may be, there's nothing wrong with them stating their desired outcome either. 
But we have to be able, and this just applies to all human interaction, we have to be able to have conversations and engage in these kinds of transactions with people who have different desired outcomes. It has to be okay for the two of you to have different desired outcomes. Hang on. Sorry. Has to be okay for the two of you to have different desired outcomes for you to talk about those and try to find the path that meets, that most directly meets both parties' needs. Now, you might find that, that, that there is no way to do that. And that's okay. Think about going to a car dealer to buy a car. And you say very specifically, here's the outcome I want. I want a red car with this feature and that feature and this feature and that feature for this price. And the car dealer is going to say, either they can provide that or not. If they don't, then they'll say, no, we can't. And, and if they're smart, they say, no, we can't. But how about this one? If they can't, they'll say no. And you say, okay, thank you. And then you go somewhere else and look, no big deal. Where this gets really tough is where extended relationships become involved. And this is what makes that, that the exact same conversation between two friends would be more difficult. Right? If I have a close friend or family member, for example, that owns a car dealership and I go to them and say that and put those expectations out there and they say, no, nope, sorry, can't meet, can't meet those expectations. I can have one of two responses. I can be emotionally detached just like I was from the stranger and say, okay, thanks. I'm going to go somewhere else and look. Or I can say, well, what are you talking about? Why aren't you, why won't you work with me? Why can't you help me out? Right? What we have to understand is that both parties or multiple parties <laughs> are equally entitled to their opinions, desires, and um, expectations. And you have to be able to, to work within that. And that's where his whole speak the truth in love comes from. If you recognize the other party has their right to their feelings and their expectations, and you can just say, hey, I'd love to be able to do this, but it's not going to work. Or, okay, I really want to do this, so I'm going to compromise on this part. How about you compromise on that part, and then we can make it work. You know, whatever the case is. That's what you have to be able to do. Yeah, and as Catherine says, you, you got to be okay with the other party saying no. I mean, but it's tough, right? I agree with you, and it's tough. Because especially when there are extended relationships involved, that's one of the reasons why the old rule of thumb is never do business with friends and family. That's why. It's those extended relationships. Glenda, good morning. So good to see you here. Um, that's why those are so tough is because those friends and family have those extended relationships and, and relational expectations projected on that transaction as well. All right. So there, that ran longer than I thought it was going to run. I'm, I'll still take a stumper question if you want to try and stump me with something. But if you have, uh, if you have been putting off a difficult conversation and you know, it, it's not going to get better. Just go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off, as they say, uh, and, and move on. Yeah, Glenda said, I don't like no, but it is what it is. And that's right. Yeah, and I, a uh, 100%. Hey, Kristen, good morning. As Catherine says, not a slight against you. It's their choice, and it's got to be okay for them to make their choice. If you can't make it okay for them to have their expectation and their preferences, then why should it be okay for you to have yours? Right? That door swings both way. That shoe fits both foot. Whatever metaphor you want, both feet. That whatever metaphor you want to use, it's a two-way street here, and it you know, good for the goose, good for the gander. There's four whole metaphors for you to try to try and prove, right? That. Whatever expectation you're projecting on them, they're doing the same thing to you, right? So understand that 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 they're they have the right. Ask them to express it. You express yours, and then see if there's a way 
to come to a meeting in the middle. And Abby, you know, you, you said something about outsourcing it. Actually, there is there is a whole system defined for outsourcing difficult conversations. It's where lawsuits come from. When two people can't sit down and work something out. Either, Kristen, we're talking about any difficult conversation. How to have, how to how to face difficult conversations. The two pieces of two tips I gave were uh, bad news doesn't get better with time and speak the truth in love. And and it applies to any type of relationship, right? The key to remember is it's easier when there's no extended relationship involved, right? It gets more difficult when that extended relationship is there. All right, Catherine's got a coaching question. Good. I like these. How do you remain okay when the yes you counted on becomes a no for some reason? No, I haven't, Kristen. Uh, it, put a link to that in the comments. That's a great book. Um, oh, what is his name? You can tell us the author's name. Crucial Conversations. I read that book years and years ago. Uh, fantastic book. Okay. Coffee up here. All right, here we go. All right, Catherine's question. How do you remain okay when the yes you counted on becomes a no for some reason? Well, and I assume you mean uh, how do you remain... Well, I don't want to assume. How do you remain okay in what respect? The, the first thing I would say is if you get a no, anytime you get a no, one of two things has happened. Either you haven't qualified your prospect well, and they're not really a good prospect, or number two, you haven't presented the value sufficiently for them to engage. Right? So let's say, um, I don't know, let's say I'm a, a, a BMW dealer, right? And someone with a very limited budget comes on the lot. I'm working really, really hard to get them into this expensive car, but they're just not a qualified prospect for this type of product. Okay. That's one, uh, one case or the flip side could be true. They're a very high spend. I, I mean, you know, they've got a lot of disposable income and I'm trying to put them into a 10 year old used beater, right? They're just not the, the, that they're not a good qualified prospect for that product. Okay, that's number one. Number two is I haven't demonstrated the value to the product well. So those are the two, you know, that as I present the offer, the customer doesn't associate the right amount of value with the right amount of fee. Okay, so those are the two conditions that cause a no. Both of those, by the way, if you picked up on that, both of those, uh, you know, if I'm making the offer, both of those are my fault, not the prospect's fault. Okay. So one is I would try to figure out kind of which bucket they fall in there. Why are they saying no? But, you know, to the question about uh, how do you remain okay when the yes you counted on, first, and I guess this is ties in well with the difficult conversations. Hey, thanks, Kristen, for putting that link in there. If they've told you yes or given you a qualified yes and then later on change it to a no, that can become a, a difficult conversation to have, but the same principle applies. You had an expectation they were going to say yes. What changed? Have that conversation. Figure out why. If you assumed that they were going to say yes, well, that's your fault. You have to stop doing that. All of this, I think what all this comes back around to is you have to talk to them. And you have to have those conversations when a customer says no. Okay, well, sure, no, that's fine. I understand. But help me understand you know, how you got to that decision. What was your decision making? You might not convert this, this prospect but they might give you good information for the next one so that you can better explain the value, better position the value, better qualify prospects, that sort of thing. All right, hope that helped. We are way, way, way long today. Look at that, almost 15 minutes.
thank you so much. I hope that the uh, the difficult conversations and, and taking a no gracefully was helpful. It's Friday. That means the weekend's coming up. Uh, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Rest, relax, rejuvenate. Be ready to attack the week. Next week's the last full week before Christmas. So got to get at it. Got to get it knocked out. We're not coasting into the new year. We're charging into the new year. All right? So get ready. We'll be back Monday with another brand new installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Until then, you have a fantastic weekend, and I will talk to you later. Take care.